Has it ever crossed your mind how the calcium levels inside your body are being maintained? Well, this is a function of a very clever little gland known as the parathyroid gland. This secretes a special hormone which is called the parathyroid hormone. Now, if you look at the back of this butterfly-shaped thyroid gland, we have this extremely small parathyroid glands chilling there. Now, the glands in the upper poles are termed as the superior parathyroid glands, and at the lower poles, we have the inferior parathyroid glands. Like I said, they are very small in size, measuring about 6 mm in length, 3 mm wide, and are 2 mm thick with a dark brown color. Imagine 6 mm, which is this size. Sometimes it's almost described as the size of a rice grain. I mean, how fascinating is our body that such a small gland is playing such a huge role in the regulation of calcium. But do not forget that the parathyroid gland is not related to the thyroid gland at all. In fact, they share nothing in common apart from being near to each other. Even the doctors and scientists in the 19th century thought that they were related. But this mystery was solved by a scientist named Cohn, who established that the parathyroid glands were anatomically independent from the thyroid. He coined the name epithelial core perchin to name these glands. It means it is hanging or resting on the epithelium of the thyroid gland. Hence, today they are called the parathyroid glands, which literally means adjacent to or close to, as you can see in the diagram here. So now, as with all the glands in our body, both the thyroid gland and the parathyroid glands are involved in the regulation of very important functions of metabolism. The thyroid gland is mainly in charge of our body's metabolism, while the parathyroid gland is in charge of regulating our body's calcium. So when the calcium levels in your body are low, parathyroid gland releases the parathyroid hormone to increase the calcium concentration and bring it back to normal. Now this parathyroid hormone is also sometimes known as parathormone. So I'll be using these terms interchangeably moving forward. So let's dive into the physiology of this hormone and see how this hormone is involved in this calcium regulation, which organs it affects and what are the mechanisms involved here. So if you look at the parathyroid hormone, it is protein in nature. It has 84 amino acids with an overall molecular weight of 9,500. If we zoom in to the parathyroid glands, we can appreciate that the chief cells present here are responsible for the release of this hormone. So what happens is that low levels of calcium in the blood will trigger these cells to release the parathyroid hormone. Zooming into these chief cells, they have calcium sensing receptors on the outermost membrane. These are the receptors that will detect the low levels of calcium in the extracellular fluid. This will result in a cascade of pathways where at the end, the parathyroid hormone is synthesized. So let's look at this pathway in more detail. Now the synthesis starts from the precursor called pre-pro-parathyroid hormone. There it is converted into a pro-hormone. Now this pro-hormone will enter the Golgi apparatus, where it is further modified into the parathyroid hormone, which is further packaged into vesicles and released into the ECF. From here, it will enter the systemic circulation and act on three main targets in the body, which are the bones, the kidney, and the GI tract. So it is important to note that the parathyroid hormone has a half-life of just 10 minutes. It means that it's only a matter of minutes that it plays this magic. It is why, because the regulation of calcium is truly a matter of life and death. Now, the normal plasma level of the parathyroid hormone is about 1.5 to 5.5 nanograms per deciliter. 
Now let us move forward and see which mechanisms does the parathyroid hormone activate and what actually happens in these three parts that I mentioned, which were the bone, the kidney and the GI tract. <music>